Okay, we don't have a bumper removal. Wanted to tell you, uh, you know, spent, I, I do often talk about we'd be better off with the double A team in the Appalachian League. Still, I want to say, I saw uh, Stephen Wilma, former broadcaster, Greenville Astros, at the Twins game against the Blue Jays yesterday, and he was blown away with the presentation. And there was a packed house. Now, it wasn't as if you couldn't find a seat. I mean, you could, but it was pretty full. And I'm uh, right there. And they saw a very intriguing game here. Uh, Prelander Baroa, who got the opening day start for the Twins, actually threw four and two-third no-hit innings, and then he was removed. This is just what modern baseball... His pitch count was 84. He walked three men. He struck out seven, so he couldn't even go the five needed to pick up the victory. He left with a one nothing lead, but still. And that's just modern baseball, and that's also Appalachian League baseball. I mean, even the majors, you know, that probably wouldn't have been the case. Now, I realize that we are in this era of pitch counts. I think they're overrated. Uh, I really do. I think I've said this there, baseball's answer to global warming. It sounds like a good idea, but nobody really knows, you know, what the Earth's temperature was in the year to, uh, 1000 to begin with. And, you know, you're, you're just guessing here. And who's to say that uh, Baroa, well, if we had him go 85 pitches, it would tear apart his arm. Do you really believe that? 300 pitches? No, it doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Then again, we're celebrating the 45th anniversary just a few days ago of a complete game in which Nolan Ryan threw 235 pitches. He turned out okay, and I think it depends on the body type, and I'm not sure that we study enough what the body type is for the pitch count. I also think the pitch count is a product of the DH, because when we didn't have them, when a Nolan Ryan could go 235 pitches because of the DH, somebody finally said, that's probably too many. We don't have the natural removal of the pitcher with a pinch hitter, and so we'll create something with called pitch count. And that started around in the 1980s. Tony La Russa was big on, oh, let's pick up on it. Have there been an elimination of arm injuries in baseball? No. Not at all. But uh, anyway, the uh, the uh, Twins, after their starting pitcher goes four and two-thirds, the relief pitchers take the no-hitter into the eighth inning, where then the Bluefield Blue Jays score a couple of runs on the bullpen. Again, you know, it's this formulatic pitching and, you know, all this. And then finally, Tyler Webb comes up in the bottom of the ninth inning and sends everyone home happy for a variety of reasons. First of all, he wins the game with a long walk-off double to right field. A long walk-off double to right field. He did it over Junior Hinojosa of the Blue Jays. Okay, it was called on to close out the 2-1 lead, and uh, Hino Josa, his first attempt at a save this season, he failed. By the way, two outs when the hit was recorded. should also mention that. Give you some other ideas as soon as we get the box score here, maybe in the next hour, about the ball game, players to look for, that sort of thing. But Webb showing some power, taking it to right, and he... Uh, Sends everybody home happy with the two-run double. The bases were loaded on a 3-0 pitch. Now, that's some guts, don't you think? Bases loaded, one-run game, two outs, bottom of the night, 3-0. And we assume Ray Smith let Tyler Webb swing. He wasn't doing it on his own. I don't think that he swung through a red lineup. You know. But that shows some confidence in Tyler Webb, and maybe then... Webb is that much more of a prospect today in the Twins organization. And so, I mean, you know, we can debate this, that sort of thing. Uh, 
I would point out, and by the way, this is obviously not to uh, confuse the young Elizabethan twin slugger with uh, the left-handed pitcher of the St. Louis Cardinals, Tyler Webb. No, he didn't get sent to, this isn't a Ricky and Keel, he didn't get traded, nothing like that. I'll give you more out there. But I think one thing that made us all happy about Webb's big hit was that that meant that the game would not go into extra innings and we would therefore be spared the gimmick of the 10th inning with the runner at second base to begin the game. Nothing really makes me more frustrated than to see gimmick rules in sports. By the way, uh, the event there, like I said, they're now selling, uh, you know, beer taps. Uh, and this was, you know, I, I remember uh, I was talking to Stephen uh, Willard, and he was really, he thought the whole production of the Twins was just something great. I want to say one thing, though, and I always used to say this when they said that Joe O'Brien Field was past its prime, needed renovation. One of the things that I pointed to is they still had the Welcome to the Show signage from 1995 up on the Joe O'Brien field and a walkway into the stadium. And I had a problem with that for two reasons. One is it's just so obsolete. I mean, you might as well be putting up baseball fever catch it or something like that on the wall. I mean, that is a long time ago. Then again, we like in baseball nostalgia, and if you put the old, you know, Minnesota Twins logo, and they've got some old jerseys up in the new clubhouse of the, let's say, Harmon Killebrew Twins jerseys, you know, with the uh, two twins shaking hands over the Minnesota, or it's the Mississippi River. You know, the one from St. Paul, the other from Minnesota, you know, Minneapolis, both from Minnesota, come on. And, you know, the, the win twins, you know, we're gonna win twins, we're gonna score, we're gonna win twins, watch that baseball score, you know, it. okay, anyway. So you had that, like I said, you, you had welcome to the show, that's just not the same nostalgia as that, let's say, the old twins logo, or a picture of Tony Oliva is, or something like that, right? I mean, it just isn't the same. But I was impressed, they had even uh, walk-around vendors, I got a hot dog from a walk-around vendor, I, hey, you know. When do we ever see that? But that welcome to the show, yeah, that is a little bit, hmm. That one, they need to get a little more modern than that. I'll say that for sure. The other thing I didn't like it, they they had this, uh, between any promotions, they had two kids dressed up as dinosaurs and they were doing some sort of tug of war type of thing, which is fine. I mean, it's in-game entertainment. It's good to have that stuff. Don't get me wrong. And so what do they put over the loudspeaker for far, far too long while they had this going on? Keisha's dinosaur. Now, I don't know if you know this song or not. Younger generation will, older generation will not. Keisha, you are really flattering yourself. It's basically about oh, Keisha telling an older gentleman who's hitting on him to go away. Now, can she spell dinosaur? No. And I've mentioned this before. Keisha, you flatter yourself. You really do. Because let me tell you something as a 48-year-old bachelor. Nothing, nothing is less attractive than hip-hop chick. You EMB